Today's program is part of a multi-year celebration of the 100th anniversary of the forest preserves of Cook County. A hundred years ago, leaders of our community predicted the growth of the Chicagoland region. They understood why it was important to preserve our natural lands for the pleasure, education, and recreation of all of our residents, especially those living in the densest urban areas. Thanks to their foresight, today the forest preserves account for 11% of county land. Nearly 60, 69,000 acres spread over 103 miles. Each year, millions of visitors come to the preserves to hike or bike on our 300 miles of trails, experience restored habitats at 22 dedicated Illinois nature preserves, canoe and fish in 40 managed lakes and ponds and seven major waterways, picnic with family and friends at 275 groves, and have fun at our three aquatic centers, 10 golf courses, nine model airplane fields, and 10 sledding hills. They also take advantage of three educational uh, and environmental programs at our nature centers, or visit Cook County's, two of Cook County's most important cultural institutions, the Brookfield Zoo and the Botanic Garden, which are part of the Forest Preserve System. However, this centennial is, is not just about celebrating and honoring the civic leaders who established the Forest Preserves 100 years ago. It's also about a new vision for the preserves in the next century, a vision that addresses issues like climate change and social justice, which you'll be hearing more about from the scholars in a few moments. In short, this is our chance to celebrate and create a blueprint for conserving our preserves for the next 100 years. While we're, while we're proud to have such vast and rich holdings, the truth is that we haven't done a very good job of caring for this resource. As our natural lands degrade, areas that were once wildflowers, grasses, and oak trees have become overrun with invasive species, such as buckthorn and garlic mustard. In fact, according to a recent study, only about 3,000 of the approximately 55,000 acres of open space are in good ecological health, so less than 10%. Furthermore, a significant per percentage of our residents don't recognize what a treasure they have in the forest preserves. Many of the millions of picnickers who visit our preserves each year have yet to discover nature beyond the groves. Public transportation options to the preserves are limited, and the majority of our holdings are difficult to navigate. And years of mismanagement have eroded public trust in our agency. At the beginning of 2013, I appointed a group of 15 civic leaders from a variety of professional disciplines, including business and entrepreneurship, education, design, planning, public health, finance, and labor, to serve on a special commission on the future of the forest preserves. Their charge was to develop a next century plan that was both ambitious and visionary and would strengthen the forest preserves position as the region's premier natural, educational, and recreational treasure. Last month, they presented me with a bold and new visionary plan that we'll be taking to our board of commissioners. The next century plan calls for transforming the preserves into places that foster diversity of plants, animals, and habitats, and welcome diverse people. The plan's four key goals focus on nature, the people, the economic value of the preserves, and creating enduring leadership. It's intended to be a blueprint with measurable results and amb ambitious targets to be reached in 25 years, such as restoring 30,000 acres to excellent ecological health, up from our present 3,000. Expanding the preserves from 69,000 acres to 90,000 acres by incorporating buffer areas, new trail connections, and threatened habitats. Helping people from all areas of the, country, of the county get to the preserves. Engaging children, families, educators from all communities to reflect the diversity of our population. Dramatically expanding the number of committed volunteers and creating a new conservation corps to engage youth and provide workforce development. Supporting the development of nature-related businesses to enhance the visitor experience and provide economic development. And finally, to establish an advisory council to provide continuous conservation leadership and expertise to our staff and board of commissioners that transcends politics. We're excited about this plan and I'm very grateful to the civic leaders and organizations and staff who have challenged us 
to be as visionary as the Forest Preserve founders were 100 years ago. I'm committed to working with the Forest Preserve General Superintendent, Arnold Randall, his staff, and public and private partners to implement the goals outlined in the plan to ensure that we are leading the way in conserving the nature for the next 100 years. After the speakers, you'll hear more from General and Superintendent Randall, who can talk about some of the specific initiatives that were outlined in the plan that we're already in the process of, of uh, implementing. And let me just say, I'm very grateful to Arnold and to all of the staff at the Forest Preserve District. Uh, when we came in, we knew we had to make some changes in leadership, and uh, I'm grateful to him and to Mary uh, Lariah, who's since uh, gone on uh, to other pursuits, for their uh, leadership of the Forest Preserves over the last three years. I'm grateful to both of them. And I want to thank all of you in this room, many of you who have been committed to the effort of protecting and introducing people to the Forest Preserves for a lifetime. And to those of you in the audience who helped shape this plan, thank you in particular. I sincerely appreciate your participation in the process and thank you again uh, for joining us here today. Thank you all.